The Pentagon is seeking over 300% increase in Pac-3 MSE production, not procurement. Production capacity. Lockheed Martin delivered 620 missiles in 2025, a record. The Army wants 2,000 annually by 2032. And Boeing just built a 40,000 square foot facility specifically to triple seeker production because the entire global Patriot supply chain is operating in crisis mode. This isn't about new fighters or carriers. This is about the missile that determines whether allies survive the next war. And right now, the United States is losing the race between production and consumption. Because while Patriot systems dominate headlines, the PAC-3 interceptor is the scarce high value component and it's running out faster than Lockheed Martin can build it. Let me show you why interceptor inventories, not platforms, now define deterrence, and why the war will be decided by who runs out of Pac-3 missiles first. The foundation is understanding what Patriot actually is. The system consists of AN-MPQ-65 radar, providing search and track, engagement control station coordinating launches, and mobile launchers carrying interceptors. But the system is worthless without missiles, and not just any missiles. Pac-3 missile segment enhancement interceptors using hit-to-kill technology that destroys targets through kinetic impact rather than explosive fragmentation. That distinction matters. Legacy Pac-2 missiles carried high explosive warheads with proximity fuses. They got close and detonated. Pac-3 uses a K-band millimeter wave active radar seeker that guides the missile directly into the target. No explosive, just physics. A missile traveling Mach 5 hitting a ballistic warhead creates enough kinetic energy to obliterate both objects. The lethality comes from momentum, not detonation. This makes PACI-3 MSE uniquely effective against modern threats. Ballistic missiles traveling at hypersonic speeds, cruise missiles flying sea-skimming profiles, aircraft executing evasive maneuvers. The interceptor pulls 180 Gs in terminal phase, forces that would shred conventional missiles. And it works. Ukrainian crews have credited Patriot batteries with intercepting Russian Kinzhal hypersonic missiles. Those engagements reverberated across Europe's defense ministries, turning theoretical capability into documented operational reality. But combat consumption exposed a crisis. A single attack could see dozens of interceptor missiles launched in response. Ukraine operates several Patriot batteries defending Kyiv and critical infrastructure. Russia regularly attacks with large strike packages, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, drones designed to saturate defenses. Each Patriot launcher carries 16 interceptors. A sustained barrage can deplete an entire battery in one engagement. The math is brutal. Over the last 10 years from fiscal year 2015 through 2024, DOD procured an average of nearly 270 MSE missiles per year. That sounds adequate until you consider operational tempo. Ukraine alone has consumed hundreds of interceptors since receiving Patriot systems in 2023. Israel expended significant numbers during Iranian ballistic missile attacks in 2024 and 2025. United States forces at Al Udaid Air Base in Qatar used Pac-3 interceptors defending against regional threats. And all these engagements happened simultaneously. Production cannot keep pace with wartime consumption. Lockheed Martin increased deliveries by over 60% since 2023, going from 380 missiles that year to a record 620 in 2025. That's a fourfold increase in total requirement. Driven by recognition that missile defense consumption in pure conflict vastly exceeds peacetime planning assumptions. The industrial reality is constraining response. In September 2025, the United States Army definitized a $9.8 billion contract covering fiscal years 2024, 2025, and 2026, funding production of 1,970 missiles for the United States Army and foreign military sales customers. Analysis suggests approximately half go to allies. That means the United States receives roughly 1,000 missiles over three years, 333 annually. But the Army's new acquisition objective requires 13,773 total missiles. At current production rates, fulfilling that requirement takes 40 years. That's why the 300% production increase matters. The goal is 2,000 Pac-3 MSE interceptors annually by 2032. Achieving that requires tripling output in seven years, an industrial mobilization unprecedented in modern defense procurement. Lockheed Martin CEO Jim Takelet says they have sufficient floor space in their Camden, Arkansas facility to support final assembly without building new factories. A combination of workforce expansion and automated tooling will allow production lines to triple output. 
Supply chain diversification with 400 existing suppliers from 37 states and five countries will continue. Lower performing suppliers will be replaced or complemented with second or third sources. But manufacturing the missile body is only part of the bottleneck. The seeker is the critical pacing item. Boeing serves as original equipment manufacturer for the K-band millimeter wave active radar seeker installed in the missile's nose. This component turns radar reflections into precise guidance commands in the last seconds before impact. And Boeing's seeker line is one of the critical pacing factors for Patriot production across the alliance. In 2024, efforts to boost Patriot manufacturing overseas ran into a hard ceiling because there were simply not enough seekers available. Boeing responded by building a 40,000 square foot facility dedicated to seeker production. The company produced over 500 seekers in 2024 and is targeting 650 to 700 in 2025. The new facility combined with process automation and modern test equipment at Boeing's Huntsville site is meant to give the Pentagon and NATO planners predictability in a supply chain operating in crisis mode since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. But even tripling seeker production only enables tripling missile production if every other component scales proportionally. The Army already started diversifying supply chains. A request for information released in June 2024 searched for a second source capable of producing the seeker. Boeing, the incumbent subcontractor, made significant investments. But the Army wants backup suppliers, ensuring production isn't vulnerable to single-point failures. This approach increases costs but reduces risk, a calculation that makes sense when interceptor shortages mean cities burn. International demand compounds the crisis. Patriot forms the backbone of integrated air and missile defense for nearly 20 nations. NATO's eastern flank, Germany, Poland, Romania, Netherlands, Spain, Sweden, Greece, all operate Patriot with Switzerland waiting for deliveries. The Middle East, Israel, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, depends on Patriot defending against ballistic missile threats. The Indo-Pacific, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, faces Chinese and North Korean missile arsenals requiring layered defense. And every one of these nations needs Pac-3 MSE interceptors that only Lockheed Martin produces. Spain became the 16th nation acquiring Pac-3 MSE through a recent foreign military sales agreement. Poland is expanding its Patriot batteries. Taiwan urgently needs additional interceptors given Chinese military exercises. And Ukraine requires continuous resupply as long as Russian missile attacks continue. The $9.8 billion contract covering 1,970 missiles splits approximately half to foreign military sales, meaning United States allies absorb production capacity that otherwise would replenish American inventories. This creates impossible allocation decisions. Every interceptor sent to Ukraine is one fewer protecting Guam. Every interceptor sold to Taiwan reduces stock available for Middle East contingencies. Every interceptor defending European NATO reduces capacity for Indo-Pacific conflict. And the problem compounds because adversaries understand the constraint. China watches United States interceptor inventories deplete. Russia times missile strikes to exhaust Ukrainian air defenses. Iran coordinates with proxies, ensuring multiple theaters consume interceptors simultaneously. The strategic implication is profound. Missile inventories now define deterrence more than platforms. An aircraft carrier projecting power is meaningless if it cannot defend against ballistic missile salvos. An airbase in Guam is a strategic liability if air defenses run dry after the first wave. An alliance commitment rings hollow if partners lack interceptors to survive initial strikes. The most important United States weapon today isn't offensive, it's defensive. And defensive capability is measured in interceptor magazines. PAC-3 MSE production increased by more than 30% in 2024, with an additional 20% growth expected in 2025. If projections are realized, production rates could reach 600 missiles annually by end of 2025. The contractual obligation is 650 per year by mid-2027 and the ultimate goal is 2,000 annually by 2032. But even if Lockheed Martin and Boeing achieve those targets flawlessly, workforce expansion succeeds, automation delivers efficiency gains, supply chain diversification prevents bottlenecks, production still trails consumption in high-intensity conflict. Consider the scenario planners actually worry about. China launches a missile campaign against Guam, Okinawa, and Taiwan simultaneously. North Korea attacks South Korea, Iran and proxies strike Middle East partners. Russia escalates in Europe. That's not speculation. That's the multi-theater peer conflict the 2022 National Defense Strategy explicitly plans for. 
And in that scenario, United States and allied forces could consume thousands of interceptors in days. Current global PAC-3 MSE inventory, counting United States and all allies combined, is likely under 5,000 missiles. Lockheed Martin completed its 2,000th missile overall in 2024, but many early production units have been expended or transferred. A sustained multi-theater conflict could exhaust available inventories before production ramps high enough to matter. And because interceptors require 18 to 24 months from contract award to delivery, replenishment during active conflict is impossible. This is why Lockheed Martin matters more than the Pentagon right now. No amount of defense budget can conjure interceptors that don't exist. No acquisition reform accelerates production faster than factories can physically build hardware. No strategic innovation substitutes for industrial capacity. The limiting factor isn't money, technology, or doctrine. It's manufacturing throughput. And manufacturing throughput depends on Lockheed Martin's Camden, Arkansas facility, Boeing's Huntsville Seeker production, and 400 suppliers across 37 states delivering components on schedule. Allies depend on United States production because domestic alternatives don't exist. European nations cannot manufacture PAC-3 MSE. Middle Eastern partners cannot produce equivalent interceptors domestically. Indo-Pacific allies lack indigenous hit-to-kill technology. Every nation operating Patriot relies on American supply chains. And that dependence creates strategic vulnerability, not for the United States alone, but for the entire alliance structure depending on American missile defense. The war will be decided by who runs out of interceptors first, not who has more aircraft, not who fields better tanks, not who controls more territory, but who can sustain air and missile defense long enough for offensive operations to degrade enemy launch capacity, because modern warfare is attritional at the interceptor level. Adversaries launch missiles until defenses collapse. Defenders expend interceptors until inventories exhaust. And the side that runs dry first loses cities, air bases, and strategic infrastructure, regardless of how many platforms remain operational. PAC-3 MSE is the most important weapon America is rushing to build because it determines whether everything else survives. The F-35 is useless if runways are cratered. The carrier is vulnerable if missile defenses fail. The alliance is hollow if partners cannot defend themselves. And all of that depends on a single production line in Arkansas, building interceptors fast enough to matter. Right now, it's not fast enough. And until it is, deterrence is a magazine count. Nothing more.